I'm Summers Pittman, and welcome to the Widget Code Along. Writing a widget that takes advantage of the rich visual design available in Android can be daunting. Your widget must run on a wide variety of devices, launchers, and screen layouts. Even if it is running well, it still needs to support multiple sizes, align with other UI elements on the home screen, and feel complete. The Jetpack Glance team has created canonical layouts to provide a starting point that supports these challenges. Canonical layouts demonstrate best functionality and design practices and are provided as open source samples on GitHub so that you can copy them into your code base and modify them to suit your needs. You can download and run these widgets from the platform samples repository. Take some time to try them out and note how they respond to being resized, moved, placed on different wallpapers. You'll notice that these layouts adapt to how they are displayed. In this code along, we will update the Jet News sample using two of the canonical layouts, List and Grid. We will examine their source code and explain how they work with the Glance components and objects to create high quality widgets. These layouts present information in a structured, easily scannable format that is ideal for Jet News. We will copy the layouts from the Platform Samples repository into our Jet News project, modify them to fit our needs, and then further customize them. If you need a refresher on widgets and glance before you begin, feel free to pause the video and check out our other talks, such as Build Beautiful Android Widgets in Jetpack Glance and Three Things to Improve Your Android App Experience. When we compare Jet News to our image grid canonical layout, several design issues pop out. First, the widget does not feel the design frame. Next, the headers are not aligned and differently styled. Finally, the Jet News widget does not use the widget background color token to enable dynamic color. These features are baked into the canonical layout. Let's begin our code along. If you are coding with me, make sure you have the Jet News sample downloaded and open in Android Studio. In the description of this video is a branch which has the layouts imported from the Platform Samples project. Feel free to pause the video and set up the project. Let's get started. Let's review the changes we made to our layout to import it into Jet News. I've copied the layouts from the Platform Samples repository into our project and removed the Action Grid layout and the Checklist layout because they're not used. I also changed the package name to use the one in our project, as well as using the resources from our project. Let's take a minute to look at how this file is structured because this structure is how all of the canonical layouts are structured. At the bottom of every layout, we have a preview. This preview is used by Android Studio to show how your widget looks at different sizes. It's configured using an annotation. This annotation is using our different breakpoints. Uh, we can configure their size and get a live update. Above this, we have a dimension section which shows constants that define how our widget is laid out on the screen. And these can be changed based on the local size of the widget using a property that's also defined in this file. Likewise, every widget has text styles available to it. So that in this case, we have a smaller text for smaller widget sizes and larger text for larger widget sizes. Above here, we have the enum that is using our breakpoints. This is where we can define how our widget breaks. So as the widget goes from 320 dp to 321, it transitions from small to medium. And then at 500 dp, it transitions from medium to large. These can be observed using the from local size object, which is available in every canonical layout. Every canonical layout also has a data item that is used to pass data between the widget and your application. And then finally, at the top of every widget is the widget layout itself. Here we have image grid layout, and it is using the Glance scaffold. Scaffold is a component provided by Glance that lets us use lots of things in the widget system by default. We use the title bar, which follows Google's design guidelines. We use a background color token widget background so that it enables dynamic color. Uh, the scaffold also supplies default padding. It sets up and it sets up your corner radius. So you end up with a widget that looks very similar and cohesive with other widgets on the screen. Now it's time to actually begin using the Jet News content and adapting our layout for the Jet News application. So if we go to the bottom down here, 
we'll see that we have items and a list of. Let's just go ahead and empty this out and check that our canonical layout is using the empty state correctly. We'll see that our dates are loaded, the previews run, and we are using this default empty state, which is really important for letting your user know that your widget is running, but there might be some configuration. We're going to take the post object, which is available in Jet News, to get some static data. And we're going to map this object, all posts, and map it to use our image grid layout data. Image grid layout data, and we will pass in values that are mapped from our post object. Um, you see here that the image is getting a red underline. This is because image grid data uses a bit a notable bitmap, but in Jet News we are using an image resource. We can just make this an integer, and that fixes that compile issue. And now we should see our data update. Okay, this is looking a lot better. We're seeing that we have our Jet News data in the application. But we notice that for some of our layouts, we are seeing um, this image take up everything. Now, what's going on here is that our layouts are designed using 16 by 9 images, but Jet News is using one by one. So if we go back up to our grid cells, we can adjust this so that for smaller layouts, we use two grid sizes and get a little bit more horizontal availability. And now we have a much better looking widget. Um, we see that the text is being truncated, so we can go to our text and supporting text composables and adjust the maximum lines. So we go from max lines 1 to 2 on supporting text and max lines going from 1 to 2 on title text. And now we see that we have our full titles. In the original Jet News layout, there is also a bookmark function. This bookmark function can be added to our vertical list item composable using the trailing bottom content property. And now we have bookmarks available in all of our, a bookmark icon available in all of our widgets. This is configurable and clickable, but for the purposes of this demo, we're just passing in an empty on-click handler. In your actual application, you will want to pass in a little bit of state so that the vertical list item can display whether or not the bookmark is actually clicked and handle that on-click. Let's try running this on our device and see how it looks. We can add the widget to our home screen. So we haven't actually added the widget to our application. Let's open the Jet News Glance app widget. And in Provide Glance, Provide Content, we see that we have the Glance theme. And then we have our Jet News content here. Let's replace this with our widget content from the canonical layout. And here, instead of using the static post data, we need to use the recommended top post observable. It's really important in your widget to use an observable value in the live widget so that the updates are ensured to be captured by Glance. In your preview, you want to use static data so that it loads quicker and more consistently. Let's rerun our application, and we should see that our widget is loaded on our home screen. Ah, excellent. So now we see that our widget is displaying, but we notice a couple of things. The text sizes are kind of small, and so we might want to adjust that. Let's replace for small and medium breakpoints the grid with a list item. The image text list layout uses a list item called list view 
for small and medium layouts. We can copy this into our image grid layout. And when image layout size from local size, So for our large and larger, we want to use our grid. And for small and medium, we want to use list views. Let's also make the list view composable public so that it can be accessed from our grid layout. We will need to map the items from the image grid item data format to the image list item format. And as before, we're using integers, we're using resource integers instead of bitmaps, so we can update our image text list item data format. And that fixes that. For small, let's not show our bookmark. For medium, let's show our bookmark. And let's also use the mapping here. Okay, so everything seems to run. Let's update our previews. Oh, and we don't need this preview from image text list layout. So let's go ahead and get rid of it because it's using bitmap still. And now we can refresh our layouts our previews, and we see that when we have a smaller layout, it uses just the title and supporting text. And when we use a larger layout, it has the icon and should have the trailing bitmap content. And now, once the preview updates, we should see that in our medium breakpoints. And in our larger breakpoints, we see that we're still using our grid. Ah, it's updated and we see this. Let's try running on our device. And so when we run on our device, we should see that for smaller layouts, the text list is used. As the text list grows in size, it displays more functionality. And if we were able to make this even larger, we would see the grid, such as if you were on a tablet. Additionally, we can adjust our grid sizes and breakpoints if we want to have grids on a smaller layout. Let's take a look at the app widget info file and see what we can do there. If we open our app widget info file, we see that we've hard coded several values. Let's use the values from canonical layouts as these have been sourced from different launchers to support a more wide variety of layouts and sizes. We also want to make sure that we constrain our layout using max resize height width and min resize height and width so that it only displays at sizes resupport. Let's also add a description. So instead of showing the application name, we show what the app, what the widget actually does. As you can see right now, it just says Jet News with a description of Jet News. Let's give it a nice description from the string resource. Show news stories on your home screen. And now when we relaunch the application,
our picker should show our updated changes. Oh, look, we forgot to copy these to the v31 file. And here we can also set our target cell width and target cell height. And because these values are adjusted based on the size of the device, we get different target cell heights for tablets and different target cell heights for phone. So now when we relaunch our application and load the widget picker, we will see that we have a phone size layout and it's using our new nicer description. Okay, so thank you for joining me in this code along. I hope that you've learned that you can use canonical layouts to kickstart your widget's design. These are only the start of building a great widget, and there's still more than it can be done. If you've been following along, try to add a preview to the widget picker. These can be done using a screenshot or on Android 15 using generated previews. Be sure to subscribe to the Android Developers Channel to be informed when there's more Android content. Feel free to reach out to us on X, LinkedIn, or in any of the Google Developer communities. Thanks for watching.